our last part of this series on prayer, I thought, you know, let me just give you some final tools and resources, send you off to help you do better in your prayer life and your prayer journey. Let me give you some final things to, to look at and embrace. And I thought we'd look at a guy in the Bible who his prayer was so impactful and incredible that God singles it out and says, now this guy and his prayer, it is a really big deal. It, it, when God takes a moment to pause and say, his prayer and, and the way that he lives, I want you to pay attention to that. We should also take a look. And we're gonna do that here today. The guy in the Bible and his prayer that was singled out in just two verses of the Bible is a guy by the name of Jabez. And some of you, you've been a believer for a long time. You've heard about Jabez. You've heard about his prayer. Uh, maybe you've even looked at it, read it, applied to your life. Uh, we're gonna unpack it maybe in a way that you, you've never understood or heard before. Some of you are newer to the faith and you've never heard of this guy. That's okay. I'm gonna help bring you up to speed as well. But what we have is really in the first nine chapters of the book in the Old Testament called First Chronicles, we got name after name after name in sort of a genealogy fashion being listed off. It's rather tiresome, 600 and something names over and over and over again. And in the middle of all of it, in this one moment, God pauses and says, but Jabez, pay attention to him. It, it's a rather fascinating thing when you, when you take a look at how God says this one is, in, is worthy this one is worthy of special recognition. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy, worthy of honorable mention. Uh, what is it in just two verses that would cause God to say, hey, Jabez, pay attention to him? What is it that would cause God to single him out of, a, of all of these 600 names to say, look at his, look at his life? Because it's interesting when we unpack this and what we're gonna get today out of our time together, we're gonna see that, 4,000 years later, in the middle of East Pasco in the state of Florida in the year 2023, God singled it out and set it forth for posterity for all generations because the nature of the prayer is a really big deal. We're going to look at it. You're going to see how this is so applicable still for you and I today. I mentioned there were 600 names. You heard me talk about that. I thought I'd give you a sampling of how those names were being rattled off. All right, so we have, I'm going to give you two verses that precede the verses we're gonna study today. Here's two verses that precede it, and it's just, you'll, you'll get tired after like two sentences here. The sons of Helah, Zareth, and Zohar, and Ethan, and Kaz, who were the father of Anub and Hezabiba, and the clans of er Erehel and son of Haram. Name, 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 name. After the two verses we're gonna study today, it just continues on. Names, names, names. It goes on in verse 11 and 12. It says, Caleb and Shuha's brother was the father of Mehir, uh, who is the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of Beth Rapha, Pasia, and uh, Tehina, and the father, uh, who was the father of uh, Nahash. They're, these were the men of Rekha. Uh, name, 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 name. In the middle of it, though, here comes this moment where God pauses and says, now let me tell you about one to pay attention to. It's the only time where he, he does this. Look, look what it says, First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Okay, so right here, God says he's honorable. He's worthy of honorable mention. All right? His mother had named him Jabez, saying, because I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, saying, and here's his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let, my hand, let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I may be free from pain. And then it says, and God granted his request. There's something about this prayer. It is so powerful. God says, oh, by the way, I'm granting this kind of request. And so we ought to take a look at it. We're going to do this. The three characteristics of Jabez's great prayer. Look, folks. We're finishing up the series. There are plenty of things that you can study about prayer continually in the scriptures. There are prayers themselves to study and look at. Like you, you should study more probably of the Lord's prayer and the, what we consider the model prayer, the Lord's prayer, and see why Jesus said each of these things are important in our prayer life. 
And, and we've talked about some of those in this series. And, and you should look at a prayer like Joshua's sun stand still prayer and, and see how powerful that prayer is. But Jabez clearly is praying something, kind of an ordinary guy. God says, I want you and I here today in 2023 to not miss this prayer. So I'm going to unpack three segments of this prayer that I think are going to be important for you to remember and hopefully apply to your prayer life. And so I put this in your notes, these three characteristics. Here's the first thing that I notice about this prayer. This is a prayer for what I might call bigger life ambition. Jabez's friends, maybe people around him, family members are living kind of average. Jabez says, I don't want to live average. Jabez says, uh, 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 no, 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 no. God, you gave me this life. I'm not going to live. I'm not going to live average. When he says, bless me and enlarge my territory, he's asking for an expansion of significance and opportunity in his life. You and I, in our prayer lives, it seems we ought to be coming to God and saying, God, what's, uh, God, what's more? What's next? What do you have for me? What do you, God, have for me in my life? He's saying, enlarge my territory, God. Give me a bigger vision. Deepen my dream. How about more goals, God? Show me something that goes beyond the ordinary. Uh, show me something special and great in life. Give me an energy for something more that you want to reveal to me going forward. And here's the thing. Where we sit in 2023, there are a lot of people walking around us, near us, and our friends and family who do not have this going on in their life, an expansion in their life. Oh, well, they got stuff. Right, we got possessions and toys and resources, but there's no purpose in the way God made us. We're wandering around in life, wondering why we're here. We could have every resource in the book, and at the end of the day, there's people wandering around. They don't know why they exist. Purposeless, purposeless sort of aimless, no desire living. And Jabez says, I'm not going to live that way. God, I, I, I'm not going to be that way. I want you to enlarge my territory. Stretch me, God. Do something that in me that maybe has never been done before in me. God, I want to shoot you. Just show me this new dream for me. I put this in, in my notes. When you stop dreaming, you start dying. Because when you stop dreaming, you're just staying status quo. Or maybe setting yourself up to go backwards. God wants us to continue, of course, moving ahead. Our guy that stood up here with the guitar just a second ago, and he talked about, uh, Zach Mosslander, he's our worship leader. He said, we want everybody every week to take a next step in your walk with God. Why do we want that? Well, because we don't want you staying stagnant. I've said this before. What's, what, when a pond becomes stagnant, what happens on the surface? Pond scum. Well, you don't want to be pond scum, right? So We don't stay average. We... And we don't want to go backwards. So we are left with this opportunity to say, I want to continue moving ahead. I put this in my notes. As long as your horizons are expanding, you're living life as a healthy human being. We miss expanding horizons. We forget to pray for expanding horizons. We have gotten very good at expanding waistlines. Yeah, we're really good at that. But what about expanding horizons and dreams? God, what challenges do you have for me? What new dreams? What greater things are in store for me? God, I want you to reveal those things to me. Have you been praying for significance and greater territory and blessings upon you as God expands in your life? This is important, God says. We ought to be continuing that journey. And here's, here's what I put, though, in, in your notes. There are three things that I think Christians settle on sink back into to keep them from desiring something greater, to keep them from uh, praying for something bigger in, in their life. I put this in your notes, three common misconceptions that prevent us from having greater ambition in life. N number one is Christians will often confuse humility with fear. Well, I'm just being humble and I could never do that. What you're saying, Pastor Gary, is something big deal. And, and I just need to stay humble. And little old me is only set to do little old things. And so I need to kind of just stay in my lane. And we say things like that under the masking of, of what we might call humility. And let me tell you all it is. It's just being fearful. 
You should stay humble. There's no doubt about it. God reserves his greatest smackdowns for prideful people. So you always want to have a check, a humility check. But hear me, you can ask God for greater things and still be humble. As a matter of fact, if God's going to do it, he's going to have to be in it. It's not going to be about you. One of the ways you make sure that your humility is always in check is to say, God, there's this thing you're leading me towards, and I realize that it's only going to be because of you that it will happen. And that's really what humility says, that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen because of God. God's going to do it. It's not going to happen because of me. So again, pride is a legitimate worry. But when you're sinking behind it to say, well, I don't want to step out because I'll look too prideful or whatever it may be, you're oftentimes going to miss some of the greater things that God has in store for you. You can ask God for bigger things and also stay humble at the same time. When God gets you motivated for an opportunity, when he gets you going, and when he gets you started, you make this recognition that it's all about you, God. You bring him into it. You seek him more deeply, but remaining humble all along while you seek more. Here's the second thing. We confuse contentment with what it actually is, is can be laziness. Well, I, gotta, I can't move ahead. I just need to be content with what I have now. Contentment's important. Philippians 4.12, I've talked about it before. Paul even says, you know what? I have, be, I have learned to be content in everything. It's an important lesson. We have to learn as believers that, you know, we, we, we ought to be content in the things that God has already provided. But hear me, you can be content and still say, God, show me more. You can do it at the same time. And we have to understand that tension or that, that balance. There are some people who think, you know what, I, I, I can't advance forward. I just need to be content right where I'm at. If the Christians sit back in contentment in that kind of way where it turns into laziness, who's going to solve the greatest issues that our planet faces? Who's going to be, who are the people that are going to solve hunger? It, it, the Christians do this. Who are the people that are going to deal with injustices in this world? It's the Christians who ought to be stepping up. Who are the ones that are going to, going to uh, seek stronger and greater families and, and deal with some of the brokenness we have in our world today? Ultimately, the movement of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's the Christians. And if we all sit back and go, I just need to stay right where I'm at and be content. We'll, we'll admit, and this is happening now all over our planet. Christians kind of sitting back and it's really it's really just just laziness imagine and think about this thought about being content with with what you have our heavenly father knows that there's so much more for you it's sort of like this if you're if your kids came home from kindergarten and you say, what did you learn today? Well, here, here's what we learned. We took these little building blocks and we made things and did things. And it was really neat, mom and dad. As a matter of fact, it was really a big deal. I don't think I need to go back again and learn anything else. You'd say, what, what are you talking about? I know there's so much more for you to learn and develop and grow in. They go to first grade. They learn some basics of math and, and, and grammar. And they come back and say, Mom and Dad, we learned in first grade some basics of math and grammar. I don't, I think I got the found, I don't think I need anything else. If you heard that, you'd say, what are you talking about? There's so much more for you to learn. Well, our Heavenly Father says to you and I, I've got so much more for you. You don't just kind of settle and say, okay, I think I've, I think I've arrived. Here's the third thing. We tend to confuse little thinking with spirituality. Well, I just got to do my little old part in the little old way God made me. Because I'm just little old me. Now, I'm spiritual because I am doing my little part in my little way. I'm a highly spiritual person if I just stay little. People kind of operate this way. And really what it is is just small little thinking. You need to understand, you have a spiritual adversary that loves when you think small. Stay small. Think in the only way that you see in the humanly realm. Don't only look at natural. Don't think supernatural. You have an adversary that wants you to just see life that way. Jabez, though, says there seems to be a power and strength in expanding where we are. He says, Lord, enlarge my territory and bless me. Really what he is is just an ordinary guy 
seeing that God can take him from the ordinary to the extraordinary. I wrote in my notes, great men and women of the faith, they are simply ordinary people with great thoughts, great ideas, great ambitions, great dreams from God, and they put them into action. Enlarging your territory is ultimately about a connection with God. In other words, I said a couple of weeks ago, motives in your prayer life matter. If your motive in your prayer is just for you to get rich and have all you can and get all, get all you can, have all you get and sit on the can and that's just your life and you want to take care of yourself and, and it's all about you, God looks at that motive and says that's an unhealthy motive in your prayer life. So motives do matter. And so when we consider an enlargement of the territory, what God is ultimately going to be looking for for you and I is a partnership with him. How does your territory expansion enlarge his territory? How do these desires and ambitions affect the kingdom of God ultimately? God wants to partner with you, and when we partner together, there's an expansion of the territory. For example, you partnered with giving through the church, and God's kingdom was expanded when 55 kids said yes to Jesus. That was you partnering in an expansion. And every one of those kids that said yes to Jesus, you have a part in, and now your territory is expanded because they drew closer to God. Before this weekend, people prayed out here uh, and prayed for you and I to come in, people in our church to come in here, and that we would all take some sort of next step in our walk with God and draw closer to Him. And every step that's taken here in the 11 o'clock service, they have a part in the people that are serving and praying for our services because we're all kind of connected into the enlargement of God's territory. It's just a little example of how we're moving forward and that territory expands and God says, I love to be a part of territory expansion. And so we line up that expansion of the dream and what God's put in us with his desires and his growth for the kingdom and what he's looking for. Here's the second part of this prayer. So we know there's gotta be a... Um, we know there needs to be uh, this, God says clearly, I like it when people want to be stretched. And then there's a prayer for growing faith. Now, this is a prayer for growing faith is what it is. When you look at these two verses, there's really no mention that Jabez had special ability. But one thing he has very seemingly is faith. In fact, I put in your notes at the very best Jabez is an ordinary guy. I'll explain why that at the very best he's ordinary in just a second. He's ordinary, yet he seems to be praying and living in greater living. Again, how does one go from ordinary into greater living? He doesn't seem to have a talent. He doesn't seem to have a gift. He doesn't seem to be highly educated. He doesn't seem to be wealthy. He doesn't seem to have any special uh, uncommon abilities known to man. So what is it that he has? Let's read the prayer, this thing here, 1 Chronicles 4.10. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I would be free from pain. You, you see... Right there in the text, it's the key to all of this point that I'm talking about here is the key to it is what takes him beyond education, what takes him beyond money and wealth, what takes him beyond ability to go from ordinary to extraordinary, it's called faith. It's called believing in God. It's called believing that God can do even more in you than maybe what the world even sees. It's faith. Believing God for a greater work in your life. And I've watched as people that seem to be very super talented become very average and ordinary people because all they do is sit on the sidelines. At the same time, I've watched very ordinary people partner with God for an expansion of the territory and by faith believe in him for great things. And I've watched very ordinary people who maybe seemingly don't have a lot of talent do incredible things. Folks, there are a lot of talented people that are jerky and they're just they're they're not making a move of God or whatever. They're not doing anything for the kingdom of God. But ordinary people partnering with God do very powerful things. We know that. We talk about that here at the church, right? God is always taking the ordinary and doing the extraordinary. Folks, I stand I'm, I stand but I'm case number 1 of ordinary. That's just me. There's, 
and it's been watching it for a lot of people here in the church. We invest in that faith journey, and that becomes the difference maker. We grow by faith, by hearing the word of God, and by applying it to our lives. You come here on the weekend, you're hearing the word of God. And by faith in the word of God, you trust in him and God does a growth in your life as you take your next steps. But it's not just at church, right? You leave here and you immerse in the word of God and you start praying. God challenges you to take other steps in your walk and becoming more like Jesus. And so you keep taking those steps in right living. We do that regularly. So we're continuing to grow by by faith. You get in, You decide to get into a small group and maybe in the small group you hear of somebody in the group that's been exercising faith and God's been showing up and it expands your faith as God's word is being revealed too in that small group. Did you, did you know we have groups at our church? Some of you may not have known that, so I just thought I'd take time to tell you about it. I, I've shared this, I share this many times. We get a lot of new people come to our church. Half of what we do as a church is taking place right here, right now. And so you're here today, congratulations, you got half of it. Did you know there's a whole other half that we do during the week? And it's, it's called groups. And we get together, 10, 12 people in about 60, 70 different places all over the community this summer, and we do smaller gatherings. Connecting, growing, studying, whatever it may be that group's doing, we're learning, connecting together. I hope that you will decide to make just another small little investment in your faith by getting to be a part of a group. The groups are rolling out right now. We've got catalogs at the connect table on the way out, kind of lists all the groups on our website. All the groups are on our website as well. They're gonna fill up fast this summer, so I hope you'll get involved in a group. But a group is just a small sliver of an opportunity to hear from people of faith, to grow in our spiritual journey. But Jabez... I mentioned earlier, seems ordinary at best. Why did I say that? Well, if we go back to the two verses, I don't know if you missed this or not, but he said, it says in the text that he was literally named, this named Jabez, because at birth, it seems he brought pain to his mother. His name, Jabez, means painful. How would you like to be named painful? Hey, what's your name, painful? Man, that is tough right there. Now, what we know about Jabez is that very likely, because of what may have happened at birth, he may have had what the world might say is maybe not even kind of an ordinary. He may have had a very difficult handicap. He may have had something very physically handicapping him in his life. And so what many scholars will say is that the amazing thing about Jabez and why God is singling out Jabez in this prayer is though he may have been ordinary at best or seemingly by the world's standards less than ordinary, he was still able to elevate past all of that and become extraordinary. And it's a reminder by faith through the power of God of what God can accomplish even when the world says it's not possible. Folks, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about you and I being labeled. Have you ever been labeled? Come on. All you got to do is live in this world a little bit of time and people start labeling you. Jabez is labeled painful. You and I get labeled though. We have things that happen in this world, maybe even at an early age that get put on us. You know, you want to do something great for God. People say, oh, that person's too shy. They can't talk. They don't speak well, or they're too much of a nervous person. Or you know what? You'll never uh, advance because you got such a bad temper and you're always going to be that way. And you know what? You'll never amount to anything. And me and your mom never wanted you anyways. And you get these words You get these labels that people put on you. Maybe it's socioeconomic labels. Maybe it's racial labels. People put and they'll say, this is the way it is. This is the way it's going to be. You're going to embrace this label and you're going to live it out the rest of your life. These limitations the world puts on us through labels, the text of Jabez's prayer says, God can take you past the labels. He can take you beyond just ordinary. It's going to happen by faith. Some of you, you, if I say what... What is the world label put on you about a, a physical handicap or a physical label or an emotional label or a spiritual label in your, in your life? What does the world say about you that you need with God's help and by faith 
to go beyond that label. Maybe you had a childhood issue like Jabez. Maybe you were scarred as a kid. Maybe you had a terrible relationship situation where something went bad. Maybe you got divorced and people uh, label you some kind of way because of the divorce. Maybe you had a bankruptcy and it's kind of this permanent seemingly label that's been put on you over your financial situation. We get the power of Jabez's prayer given to us why it's so significant because he was seemingly able to overcome this. I put in your notes, if you don't, when it comes to labels, there will be one of three categories you're going to fall into. Two, in particular, you're going to sink into one it needs to be the response to the, to the labels. I put in your notes, in life, you are either going to be, you're going to decide to embrace these labels and you're going to be uh, an, acu- an excuser, an accuser, or you'll push past all of that and you'll become a chooser. And everybody in this room, if you're not careful, like you're going to fall into one of these first two categories. I hope that you would embrace this third category. Let me tell you what they are, though. What is an excuser? I think you already know. An excuser is somebody who makes an excuse for everything. I couldn't do it great because blank. I couldn't operate in significance because blank. I've had this thing happen, and I'll never be, so they it's excuses. And when you embrace labels, you fall into an excuser. There's the accuser. You probably know what the accuser's known for. They're part of the blame game. It's all their fault. And if I had had this growing up, and if my mom and dad hadn't done this, or if I had had this, you know what, but I can't have that, and so it's never going to work out. And so they're the accuser, and they're just blaming everybody for their problems. I don't minimize the things that have been done to you in your past. Same with Jabez, right? But by faith, there's an advancement beyond the excuses and the accusations. And that's where we choose to live different, become a chooser. These are the people that make it in life. They make it because they choose to believe God. God takes them beyond their difficulties, their hurts, their habits, their hangups. This is why Jabez's life is an honorable mention because he was able to overcome so much. A man with great ambition, God says, in the midst of 600 names, I'm going to single him out. A man of great faith, and then I put this last part in your notes. He had a prayer of genuine petition. What do I mean by petition? Uh, It's a request. It's an ask of God. And remember last week, I said when we ask of God, we ask of God in the name of Jesus. Why do we ask in the name of Jesus? Well, because Jesus said to, number one, so that's important. But number two, Jesus is our intercessor, the Bible says. Uh, That's clear over and over again. What does that mean? That means that I came to know a relationship with God because of Jesus, the gift of God, the one and only son, Jesus Christ. My sin was forgiven. Jesus ascended into heaven and now seats at the, seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says over and over that he's interceding on our behalf before God. We don't go to a priest. All right? we, he is now our high priest, the Bible says. So we go, to, we go to God through the intercessor, Jesus Christ. And we make petitions. We make requests. So anytime you make a request of God... You're able to do that because of Jesus as your intercessor. An important thing to remember. Now, our guy Jabez makes three petitions that are seemingly very valuable because at the end of this talk about Jabez, God says, it says in the scriptures, and God granted his request. Don't miss this. There are three parts of this prayer that Jabez prays, that God says, if you pray these things, every time I will answer for you uh, in affirmative. Remember I said at the beginning of this, or this series or a couple weeks ago, I said, I said, how does God respond to prayer? It's no, slow, grow, or go. It, it, it's one of those ways, right? It's how he responds to prayer. Well, in this prayer, God is saying there are three things you can pray for and I, it will be go, it will be yes. You want to know those, don't you? What are three things I can pray for that God says I'll always deliver on? I'm going to give these to you. Here's the first. Jabez prays for power 
God's power in his life. Do you understand that anytime you invite God's power into your life, God will deliver? If you really seek after his power and strength for your life, and that becomes a consistent part of your life, that not by my power, but by your power, God, I'm weak in this area, but your power is gonna make me strong. God, I'm gonna trust that you'll strengthen me in this time of exhaustion. God says if you will embrace this invitation of inviting his power into your life, God will deliver. And I've known this experiences firsthand, like when I'm at the place where it's, I'm at the end of me, God steps in and he reveals his power to me, it is true. When you, when you decide to say, God, on my own, I don't, I'm not sure I can be the husband I need to be, but by your power I can be, God says, yeah, I'm coming through for you. God, I, I, wanna be a, I wanna be a better father, but I need your help. God says, yeah, I'm gonna help you. God, I need your help on this addiction. God, I need your help on this choice. I, God, I need your power and your strength in, in, in this way that I'm living in my life right now. God, I invite your power in regularly. God says, I'll show up with power. What was that part of the prayer? When he said, bless me and enlarge my territory, what Jabez was saying is, this expansion is going to happen because of your power, God, not mine. I was reading this prayer when I first read it and it said, you know, bless me and expand, enlarge my territory. And I thought, man, what a selfish prayer. <laughs> this guy really, you know. And then as I looked at the significance of the prayer and the ambition of the prayer and how it was a partnering with God and his power, I saw why God singled out this prayer. Remember, ambition is neutral. Ambition itself is neutral. Is there unhealthy ambition? Yes, when it's selfish, right? Ambition, though, becomes healthy when it's godly ambition. It's one or the other. So ambition is neutral. And in this, we see God, by your power, God, by your strength, you are going to be the one that delivers on my behalf. Are you inviting God's power into your into your prayer life regularly through by your heart. It says, God, I believe you will deliver. And here's the thing. When you invite God's power into your prayer life, he does take you from the things that you can see in the natural. He takes them to the supernatural. The things that you see that look kind of basic in life, God says, now I want to show you even more. Remember Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, we looked at that. It says that my ways are not your ways. They're higher than yours. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're higher than yours. And so when you invite God's power into your prayer life, he starts to reveal that expansion because he shows you things you could have never seen before. And you start to embrace the scripture like Ephesians 3, 20 that says, God, I believe you are able to do more than I could ever think or imagine because your power is getting involved in my life. I believe now I can ask for anything. I can ask for everything. I can ask whatsoever, whensoever, whosoever. I believe, God, you're the one that's now going to decide how much my life is going to be blessed because by faith it will be done unto me, unto you. And so, God, I believe you are going to show up and do great and mighty things in my life now because your power is getting involved. A prayer for power will be responded to by God in the affirmative. Here's the second thing. Jabez prayed for God's presence in his life. He said, let your hand be with me. That's a prayer of presence. He says, God, in my life, I wanna know you're right by my side. God, in my marriage, I wanna know that you're right by my side. As I raise my children in my life, God, as my territory increases, I know my responsibility is going to increase. Right? When your territory expands, you got more borders to defend. You got more things you got to deal with now. When your territory expands, there's additional pressure. There's additional problems. There are different problems. There are bigger problems. You've got more enemies. And oh, by the way, the devil's going to hassle you more. And so you better make sure you're inviting in this connectivity to the presence of God. Here's the thing. The more territory you get, the more your decisions impact people around you. Right? You, just in simple terms, the bigger our church becomes, like every decision, good or bad, that I make affects a lot of people, right? Same thing is true in your life. If your territory expands, every little decision starts to affect more and more people. And so just in decision-making alone, you should be inviting this 
presence of God in everything that you're doing, you know, because you and I have enough things going on in our day where we can make some really serious mistakes. And so we got to watch out. People, some people will say, well, I made this bad mistake in my life because the devil made me do it. If we can do enough dumb things. The devil don't have to do nothing. And so we need that presence of God continually. And God reminder through the prayer of Jabez is that if you will invite me in that presence, you will sense and know me as your territory expands. And as your territory expands, there's a prayer that Jabez makes for protection. He says, keep me from harm so that I will be from free from pain. Another translation says, uh, free from the pain of hurting others in essence. He says, protect me. He's talking about keep me from harms. He's talking about, he's talking about harm. He's talking about the spiritual attacks and the, the things that come at you and I spiritually when we grow in our walk with God. When you grow in your walk with God and your territory begins to enlarge, you're going to get more critics. You're, the enemy's coming after you more. And so you're praying that prayer of protection. God, as my territory expands, God, I need more and more of that protection, right? If you think about when you buy a home, you, maybe your first home you get, you know, it's got a small roof. Or maybe where you are today, it's a small roof, but you want to get a bigger home. Well, well, if you get a bigger home, you get a bigger roof. What do we put on top of that roof that protects the roof and protects the entire home? It's a thing called a shingle. And the bigger the roof, the more the shingles we got to have. Because if that roof goes bad, everything caves in, the whole house falls apart if the roof goes bad. Jabez says, I know what can happen if I don't have the right protection, as my territory enlarges, we got to have more shingles. We got to have more covering, God, because there's going to be attacks coming our way. And so I'm just inviting God, I'm inviting you in for that extra covering regularly, God. There's a tempter that's coming after me, God. I pray for your protection. What do we get? It's a powerful prayer throughout all of human history. Great ambition given to us by God a great faith that takes us past our labels and into the extraordinary and three petitions of a genuine prayer life that you and I can add every day into our prayers. And God says, I will respond affirmatively to those prayers. I hope you're learning and growing on this journey together as we've been studying prayer. If you missed any of the weeks of this series, they'll certainly be available on our website or on YouTube. You can go back and check those out. I encourage you to do that. Let me pray for you right now. Would you bow your heads and we'll pray together. Uh, God, there's probably a, a longtime believer, just as we've had every week in this service. They're getting little tidbits. They're getting little recaps. They're getting, getting a little reconnected to what makes a successful prayer life. And Lord, uh, it's for all of us. We look at Jabez and... Every one of us sees something. Maybe somebody here stopped praying for this godly ambition for, for significance and, and greater expansion in their life. They're going to start regularly adding that into Maybe uh, you need to just by faith see that God can take you further and farther you ever imagine. Maybe these prayers of, of power and presence and protection. God, you're reminding us through this great moment in history. Others, maybe... Here, you're like every week of this service, we've had people attending with us and by the dozens in every service who do not know God. You, 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 there's nobody interceding on your behalf at the right hand of the Father if you're not a believer. You can petition God all you want and certainly he is sovereign and he can do whatever he wants, but the Bible says at the end of the day, if you want a prayer life, it comes through Jesus Christ interceding on your behalf. And how does one have that? It comes through this Jesus Christ who came to earth on your behalf, died on the cross, rose from the dead, did all of that so that you could be forgiven of your sin. And now forgiven people have access to the heavenly father through Jesus Christ. And there is only one name on heaven and earth by which anyone could be saved. And the Bible says that is only the name of Jesus Christ. He can be the only one that forgives you and makes that way to the Father. Would you just invite that forgiveness right now in your life from where you see it saying, God, I'm ready to turn to you. Forgive me of my sin. 
God, there's a way I've been living. There's choices, things all my life. God, I, it's not been, you've not been involved. I'm ready, God, for you to be involved in my life. I accept the gift of salvation, life, eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. I receive that now in Jesus' name. Amen.